Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Trish Baum from Academic Support Programs at Baylor University. And with me are my academic mentors and they will explain what they do. Um, but we have Caroline, Blessing and Rachel. They will be answering some questions and hopefully um, calming some of the, the anxiety and the fear and the unknown of what you're about to experience this fall. So um, college students usually have more free time than they did in high school. So Caroline, tell us a little about the typical schedule that a freshman has and, and the, the importance of it. Yeah, so moving from high school to college, you will feel like you have so much free time. And typically, freshmen will take about 15 credit hours. So that's five classes and three credit hours per class. Sometimes you'll have a lab that is one credit hour, or you may have multiple labs in a semester. So um, allocating your time and managing your time well will be key to surviving your freshman year. So because you have five classes and they only meet for three hours a week, it's easy to feel like in the time that you're not in class that you that time is free to use at your discretion. Um, and we really suggest studying a couple hours per class meeting. So if your class meets for three hours a week, maybe studying, you know, three to six to nine hours outside of class for that class, just depending on how difficult it is. And then labs meet, um, for probably two hours at a time, even though they're only one credit hour. So that's something just to keep in mind that just because a lab is one credit hour, it's a significant amount of work that you're adding to your workload. Um, and then using time management strategies like an hour by hour calendar are really gonna be helpful for you to keep track of when you have class, when you should be doing homework or studying reviewing notes from that class that day, preparing for class the next day, that kind of thing, so that you're always on top of your classes, even if they don't meet every day of the week. Perfect. All right. Um, incoming freshmen may not be familiar with what a, a syllabus is. So Rachel, could you go over the value of, of a syllabus and how to use it? Yes. A syllabus or your course syllabus is going to be like your Bible for that class. Um, that's going to be really important for you to um, reference throughout the semester um, because many times professors will put the course schedule in there. Um, and so it will have what exactly you're doing for each class and what's gonna be due each class. So um, yeah, like I said, that's really gonna be um, super, super important for you to have handy and um, to constantly be referencing. And the syllabus is also where professors are gonna outline all of the nitty gritty details of grading, um, what's required uh, exactly of you, um, rubrics, things like that. So like if you have a paper or a presentation, um, that's where you'll find those details. Um, it never hurts to clarify those um, with your professor if you have any questions. Um, but yes, lots of important information is in the syllabus. And so it will be really important for you to, to hang on to those and um, for you to reference them. Um, I would also say that, um, let's see, what was I gonna say? Oh, yes, you're, um, sorry, you're, uh, Oh, before class starts, you might have a reading or something due. Um, and so it will be important if the professor gives you access to the syllabus on Canvas before class, it will be important to, to look at that before you go to class. I would say that's more common for upper level courses, um, but it definitely still um, can happen for um, incoming freshman courses. And it will also have the information about um, the textbook that's required for the class as well. Awesome. Okay, in college, classes feel just a little bit differently, academically especially, um, than in high school. Blessing, can you tell us 
a little bit of, of the feel of a class and, and how it's a little different? So with classes, um, you ha everyone has different schedules. And it's kind of like that in high school, but it's a bit different here because you get to hand select the classes that you want. Um, some people like more morning classes, some people like afternoon classes. Um, classes, when you go, like um, Rachel said, you want to make sure that you're prepared before you go because different professors have different teaching skills and, and different teaching uh, techniques. Some professors just want to talk through the PowerPoints. Some professors just ask questions that you have if you've read the PowerPoint prior. Some professors have like videos. Different professors have different techniques on how they teach in classes, but you want to make sure you adapt quickly. So after your first week, you sort of get the vibe of how your professor likes to teach, and that should prepare you in the, in the coming weeks to be more prepared for your classes. With assignments, you want to make sure you don't create that habit of doing it the night before because some assignments require much more time than you think. A professor might say read a chapter and then you go read that chapter, but it's like 14 pages and you need to read it properly before you can do the assignment. So you want to make sure, like Caroline said, you have a, a, a schedule for yourself where you allot time for different things. In the mentoring department, we came up with a, with a um, method to assign times to all your classes. So if your class is a three credit hour class, um, you wanna assign a ranking of difficulty. So one being easy, or not easy, because there's no class that's easy in college, but you know, not as much effort is required for that class. Maybe it's like a lifetime fitness class or something like that. And then two is like medium or your average or your standard class week. You know, you need to spend time at least maybe three hours um, twice a week or something like that. And then three is your hard classes, like maybe your physics classes. Physics might come easy to some people, but maybe not everyone. So some classes um, might not be like hard, but like content heavy. Like we hear a lot that religion is pretty content heavy. And so some people will rate that a three. And so with that ranking, you want to multiply that by your um, class course um, credit hour. So if it's a three credit hour course and you've rated that class a three, um, that'll be three times three, so nine. So you wanna spend nine hours that week studying for that class. And studying, that nine hours could include studying and assignments, but you have to be honest with yourself. If that's a class that requires a lot of time doing assignments and seven hours of your nine hours for that week is spent doing assignments, you cannot use two hours to study. So you have to um, add more time to that. So if you're finding that you spend half more than half of your time of your your a lot of time for that class doing assignments so you want to extend that so maybe your weekends are just not going to be as free because you need to study more for that class maybe you do assignments every day or you do assignments on those days that you've allotted but every day you assign like 30 minutes just to study for that class it's going to be up to you there's no one um uh, formula nothing works specifically all the time but you just want to adapt and you want to pay attention to your study habits and like how the class, um, how much effort the class requires of you. But yeah, so that's how you would study and do assignments for your classes. Perfect. Thank you. Um, in every class, a student will have to take notes. Caroline, can you give some note taking techniques for the students? Yeah, of course. Um, so in high school, you might or might not have to take notes. You might, you know, get a printout of notes. I know at my high school, we would kind of get an outline and we just had to fill in some words. And um, that's, that was my note taking. And so in college, um, you definitely won't get a fill in the blank kind of note system. Um, and it'll be up to you to really um, take good notes, pay attention in the lecture, and and take the key points from what the professor emphasizes. So a lot, I mean most of the time I would say you're going to get a PowerPoint ahead of time or at least um, after class. So the professor will go through the PowerPoint with you for the lecture and if you get that ahead of time, I highly suggest doing, doing your reading ahead of time and taking some notes alongside the PowerPoint um, that just 
you are walking into class ready to have a discussion with the professor, which is only going to make you more prepared for that discussion, more prepared for your assignments, and definitely more prepared for your test. So um, that's something I really recommend to all of my students is to read ahead of time, take notes ahead of time, even if you're not given the PowerPoint. And so some students like to use a note taking system called Cornell Notes. And a lot of um, the freshmen that I've worked with in the past have actually heard of this, but um, you don't have to have the fancy like Cornell note taking paper. Um, I just suggest my students like draw a line halfway down their sheet of paper and on one side take the notes in class. And then after class, as you're going back through and reading your notes, start pulling out key points. Or if you have a question about something on the other half of the paper, write down your question and then you can take that to your professor. You could email it to them and just get your um, get some more clarity on what they want you to know about that topic. Um, Cornell notes is something you could do also ahead of time. So you could take your notes ahead of time and then while you're in class, you, you know, highlight what the professor said um, or you take additional notes in the other column. Those are some really great note taking systems that I think have helped my students in the past. I'm a big paper person, so I like to print out the PowerPoint and take my notes on the PowerPoint. I did though in grad school, I started doing more note taking on um, my tablet. So I have like a tablet that I could upload my PowerPoint into and real time like use the stylus to take the notes on the PowerPoint in class. And that was really effective for me as well. Um, and then taking those notes to study for the test, what I would do, I would, you know, print the PowerPoint and use that as a sort of study guide. You know, you can white out key terms, white out important facts that you know you're gonna need to know for the test. And so once you have that printed out, you just almost make it into a practice test. And so if you take really good notes, you are serving yourself by preparing a practice test so that you can study ahead of time for the exam coming up. Um, so there's so much value in taking good notes. It's not only for that lecture for that day, it's preparing you for exams, quizzes, everything like that. Did that, I think that touched on it all. For I think you got it. Okay. All right. So we had talked about the syllabus, uh, that the professors use to, to go through their classes and, and tell everything about it. Students may see that professors have office hours listed. So Blessing, can you explain the importance of visiting those professors during those hours? So office hours are very, very important. I know a lot of students get intimidated in classes, whether big or small. You know, you don't want to ask a question to maybe look stupid or like, you know, sometimes you feel like your question is like, Maybe you're not smart enough, so you don't want to embarrass yourself in class. And then sometimes you, I mean, you feel like you understand class and then you go home to studying and there's certain concepts that you still don't quite get. That's what office hours is for. So you want to look at those office hours and then it, it doesn't have to be a whole hour in there because your professors, I mean, they have office hours, but you're not the only student that, you know, that they're going to see. But even if it's just to pop in and say, hey, class on Tuesday was great. I had this question. Sometimes you don't even have to have a question. Sometimes you just want to talk through concepts to make sure that you understand it the way they want you to understand it. And I find that a lot because I just go and make conversation and the first is like, yeah, that's right. But you know, I made it in this, in this way or they shed a little more light on it uh, or they say it in like a different, in a different way that you didn't think about and it, it might help you more in the exam because maybe how you had it worded sometimes you know students get tests back and they're like but that's what i said and professor's like well not quite you know so sometimes being close enough isn't good enough and that's when going to office hours is super helpful so they explicitly explain what they taught you in class or they clarify a problem that you have or sometimes it's just good to become friends with them because when it's time to get good um, recommendation letters and things like that, they don't have to 
not fake it, but they don't have to like try to find something to say about you because they don't remember too much about you. But when you've been friendly and you're familiar face, they have much more to say. And I feel like the um, the words are more heartfelt when people read the letters. They're like, oh, this was actually a, a student who, you know, got to know her professor. The professor also got to know the student. And also, I always say this, going to office hours are where like exam gems get dropped because professors, they speak the same way they think. And so they're going to write the exam the way they think. So talking with them helps you be better prepared than just reading a textbook or um, a PowerPoint. Those are all efficient, but it's that extra, it's that extra oomph that sometimes you need to, to um, be better prepared for a test or just to understand your your um, courses concepts in general so please go to office hours i beg you <laughs> <laughs> nice all right um students may have heard that the tests in college are more application based rachel can you go through and explain the types of tests that are given and what that means and how a student should study for it Yes, so um, when they say um, tests are more application based, that just means um, rather than testing um, your just like rote knowledge, like what is a nucleus, for example, maybe we're talking about a biology test. Um, so rather than asking what is a nucleus or what is its purpose, they may ask you how does the nucleus affect x y and z how does it affect these different processes what's its role in um, this process so rather than just seeing if you know what it is or what the um, concept is they're going to ask you to sort of elaborate on it um, so that's really where um, your studying is going to be really important because you will need to not just know um, facts that you can recite you're going to know how to or you're going to need to know how to apply those facts and that information to different um, situations so that is really what that sort of means in a nutshell and i would say that um, exams in college you're going to have your, your average class is going to have four to five exams i would say um, per semester i would i find that to be true for um, most students um, and so it's really important to do well on those four or five exams because nine times out of 10, those are weighted much more heavily as far as your final grade um, when compared to your homework assignments. So you will have homework. Um, it's more than likely just not going to be weighted very much. Uh, if your high school is anything like mine, the homework was weighted a lot more heavily on whether you did it and did it correctly um than the exams but that is not um really the case when um, you get to college so that's why we are stressing so much um the importance of studying for those exams is because those are usually much more important when it comes to that final grade um, and you will have the occasional course that just has a midterm a final and then like a paper or a presentation and so it's especially important in those classes too, because obviously you only get three to five grades per semester. Um, so yeah, like I said, the, the importance of those um, big exams is, is really important. In college too, since you only might have two tests, maybe four or five, um, it's going to be critical that you study ahead of time for those tests, not just the night before, not just two nights before, but we usually recommend, you know, a whole week before your test to really begin studying and making sure that you're distributing that practice out across multiple days, practice testing, so that you walk into the test and you know that you know the information. It's not that you just recognize it and if you know if the right answer is in the multiple choice then you can pick it out because more than likely you're going to be picking out the best answer and all of them you know might be fine answers but you're picking out the best one and you really want to know that you know your stuff because they're gonna um sometimes tests are tricky and they they might mean for it to be tricky or they might just um really want to know that you're doing a good job studying and that you're prepared to take the test 
Excellent. Blessing, do you want to add anything else? No, I mean, she said everything, but just to make sure that you get a routine for yourself. Don't just okay, I'm going to study, I'm going to start studying on Monday for my test that's next Monday, but you don't have a plan on how you're going to do it. It really, really helps out to give yourself like a little timetable. So day one, I'm going to print out all my PowerPoints and look through all my highlighted stuff and circle like the most important parts. And day two, I'm going to sit with a friend who I know did really well on the last test. Um, so some of those questions that I missed and she got a better point We'll talk through it. Day three, you know, just make sure that you're intentional about those days. And because a lot of times we just say study. I'm going to study for five days, but like we don't have a process around it. And then you find out that you sat for maybe two hours for those five days, but the, the real nitty gritty of what you got was maybe three hours in the, in the whole five days that you worked, you worked on studying on your notes. So, and then don't make sure that you're not just like printing stuff out because a lot of people like to study pretty. So they print their PowerPoints, they highlight the stuff and it's just paper you're going to put in the trash anyway. So make sure that whatever you're doing, you're learning from it and you're being intentional about the knowledge and the alignment that you're trying to get for your test. That's so true. And, um, I find a lot of my students too, they love studying what they already know because it makes them feel like they know what they're doing. You have got to find those things that you don't know and really press into them. It's so fun to feel like you are really prepared for your test by studying what you're really good at, but you really have to focus on the things that you are not as familiar with because it's not as fun, but getting back a bad grade on a test isn't any fun either. So true. All right. So um, I always ask my mentors at the end of this session their final two cents, what they think that every freshman must know before they come in. Um, the, but we're, we can't cover everything. So the one key thing, blessing, that you think every freshman needs to know before they step onto campus, what is that? remember the reason why you're coming to college which is to get a good education and grades don't necessarily some a student getting an a and a student getting a b doesn't make that student better but grades and a gpa are a reflection of your academic performance and what you've learned and so the higher it is the better so you want to make sure you come and strike the iron while it's hot you're young come in study do all that you need to do don't get distracted have fun things but prioritize your time. Make sure that you're focusing on your academics, getting those high grades, getting that GPA as high as possible. If you hit that 4.0, God is good. If you get a 3.8, just do your best to make sure that you hit that foundation GPA really high because it's hard to bring the grades up from there. Things are gonna get more complex, more um, effort is gonna be required to study for certain classes. So use that freshman year to get your high GPA. All the best. <laughs> All right, Caroline, what do you feel every student must know? Um, I love, love, love blessings advice and I don't want mine to sound like at all contradictory to it because priority number one, you get the best GPA possible. But while you're doing that, you've got to find your community, like find the people that are going to make you better and that you can have fun with and that have high values and the same values as you and that you're going and doing life in the same direction as them. Um, find people with different hobbies and that came from different backgrounds, um, but just find your people because like they are your support system. You have your family. You know, you have your friends from back home, but the people that are on campus with you are the people that are going through the same things as you at the same time, and you can lean on them. And um, it's even better if y'all are in some of the same classes. And so that, that might mean that, you know, your friend group changes a little bit semester to semester, but just find those core people that um, you can do life with because like when they say college is the best four years of your life, it really is like it's hard. And there are things that are just, you know, you, you do, you make sacrifices to go to college. You, um, 
but it is truly the best time of your life and having a core group of people that you get to have all those experiences with like no one can ever take that from you you know you you can still call your friends years after college and reminisce on those times and congratulate each other throughout the rest of your life so um get your best gpa but but find fun people that you just absolutely love to do it with all right rachel your turn Yes, so Caroline and Blessing gave awesome advice, but I would just add to that. Um, I think the thing that makes um, students really successful in college is just managing your time well. And um, so I like to think my answer is a little, uh, or kind of like in the middle of Caroline's and Blessing's because um, you do want to have fun. You do need to make time for those people and those fun things in college because, again, like Caroline said, it is the best, best time of your life. But then you also need to make time um, and prioritize your academics. So I think nailing down um, your own system of time management and how you keep track of assignments and tests and papers um, and social things, social activities, I think is really important. And that's not to say that you need to have that um, completely nailed down before you get here. Um, that's kind of what our department is here to help you with. Um, if you are struggling with time management or you need some different tools or what you're doing isn't working, we're, we are here to help, help with that. Um, but yeah, and everyone's also different in that, that way. I have a lot of organized friends and we all um, manage our time differently. We all have different planners. I do mine on the computer um, and some are more paper pencil people. So it really looks different um, from person to person, but I think um, really making that a priority is, is important to being successful in college. Um, okay, so um, basically I hope that you students have taken away that Academic Support Programs is here to help you with whatever needs you have at Baylor. Um, we are located at the basement of Sidrich, the West Wing side. And anytime you need anything, you have any kind of questions, you're uneasy about your courses, just need some advice, come on down the stairs. We will be happy to help you. We are a judge-free zone because we have all had these struggles questions, concerns that you have had, and we are just here to help you. So welcome to Baylor, and we hope to see you soon. And so you've really got to know, know your stuff, because um, it'll be hard, it's gonna be hard to figure. <laughs> I'm outside, that was a helicopter. <laughs>